Good morning, boxing freaks. Y'all saw what happened last night, man. That HBO boxing after dark, man. It was, it was hot. It was just, it was fire. Like I said, man, explosive, dynamite, exciting. Just, uh, just, you know, it was free. It was great. It was just, you know, we were seeing knockouts left and right, man. We put on some special effects, man. This is the only thing we were seeing last night. Anyway, let me get at this, man. This could be a debate. It could be an argument. Uh, but it's my opinion on this. Look, I'm looking at this fight. Mr. Uh, Mr. Eurekis Kamboa versus Mataiwa. Eurekis Kamboa knocked out Mataiwa in the second round, almost knocked him out in the first round. What we were seeing last night, was, th was it a matter of, uh, of Kamboa just being, just being able to hit harder, being faster, just outclassed Mr. Mataiwa? I could, I, could, I could look at it this way. It's not just that Kamboa outclassed Mr. Mataiwa, it's that Mataiwa is not even in that weight class. Mataiwa yesterday weighed in at 122. So he has no business fighting at 126. So was it a matter of, of Camboa just being incredibly strong and fast or was it a matter of, of Camboa just fighting a smaller guy from a smaller division? Honestly to me it was just Camboa fighting a smaller guy from a smaller division. Uh, so you can imagine if Matawa weighed in at 122, he probably came in at 125 if he ate a horse. And then you have Mr. Camboa Weighed in at 126, he probably stepped in the ring at 135. So he was just bigger, stronger, faster. He had every advantage, you know, he, he can have. If you were to compare Matagua and Juan Juanma Lopez, Juanma Lopez is 26 years old. So his body is growing. It's asking to move up in weight. But Matagua is 31 years old. So Matagua is it's just comfortable at 122. He, he fights at 122, and he can't make 126 because we saw that in the weigh-in. But still, I don't want to take any credit away from Mr. Cambo. I'm a big fan of Cambo ever since I laid eyes on that cat on ESPN Friday Night Fights, man. That cat is special, I'm telling you. Uh, Cambo, we have a lot more to see from Cambo. It's kind of it's kind of sad that we, we saw Cambo come in at, at a later age. If he would have came in younger, it would have been even better, you know, because he only has 16 fights. He's 28 years old, so he got to get it moving. He got to get it rolling if he wants to make some, some money in, that, in the sport. And, uh, and still, I know we're going to see Cambo for three or four more years at least. Mr. Juan Ma Lopez, incredible man. We could have a little bit of a debate on this too at a certain point. Anyway, Juan Ma Lopez coming in for the first time fighting at 126 versus Mr. Steve Luano. 37 fights, one draw, uh, uh, one loss. Steve Luano has never been knocked out. Here comes Mr. Juan Ma Lopez and rips him with an uppercut in the seventh round and knocks, uh, Mata knocks Steve Luano out. But that's the part I want to get to. Steve Luano. When he caught him with that uppercut, Steve Luano did look kind of bad. You know, he's going back, his eyes are just, you know, uh, and he falls, he falls nasty. He's getting back up. When he's getting back up, I think he had some more in him to fight, but he acted incorrectly. If, if you're ready, you know, you get back up, you look at the referee, yes, I'm ready to fight, come on. When you look him in the eye, you're ready to fight, you get at it, you know. But the thing is, he's getting up, he's looking kind of dazed, he's doing this with his eyes, he's kind of falling back into the ropes. And when the referee says, no more, you know, stop the fight, he reacts, you know, he reacts like, oh, I'm ready to fight, I'm ready to fight. But he should have done that as soon as he got up from the floor. He should have just reacted quick so the referee doesn't get a, an opportunity to stop the fight. Because I understand, though, the referee should have gave Mr. Luvano a chance to keep fighting, you know, just let, let him, you know, give him a chance, man. The guy, that's the first time he was knocked down to the ground. The guy is a champion. Give him an opportunity to try to do something. If you see he gets catched with a couple more punches, then stop the fight. Because I can see that you're trying to protect Mr. Steve Luano. Because boxers, they'd rather die in the ring than lose. But I ain't seen nobody protecting Mr. Matawa, man. They should have stopped that fight probably in the first round. They kept throwing Matawa in there. They kept throwing Matawa in there. Matawa was lost 12 times. Matawa weighed in at 122, so he could have been seriously hurt. Matawa is not a champion in that weight class, so why give him so many opportunities? He's going to lose anyway. You know, I saw, you know, this Matawa was knocked down like five times or something. You know, when it's Steve Luano, who is champ, Steve Luano, who's never been knocked out, Steve Luano, who is fighting in his own weight class, and he's knocked down. He did look kind of nasty when he got knocked down, you know, but still he got up. You know, I, I think referee could have grabbed his, you know, his gloves. He's like, you ready? You ready? And, if, you know, and after a bit, if the guy reacted, you know, let him fight. Give him one opportunity at least. But I see that, so, you know, I think it, it could have been an early stoppage, or he probably was hurt. You know, I think he was hurt. But still, in my opinion, I think Juan Ma would have caught him sooner or later. I think Juan Ma was going to knock him out either way. You know, it was just a matter of time. And the thing about the fight, though, like I said, Steve Luano fights in that slow-mo. He gives you that jab, you know, 
He's in, you jab and he, he's coming at you with that straight left. And the thing is, you can, t you can see the fight. He was jabbing the hell out of Juan Mar Lopez. Uh, I, I, Juan Mar Lopez, I, I would have liked him to move his head more. The guy was not moving his head, man. I think a boxer has an advantage when you're moving your head. The guy was just in there. I don't know if the, that was part of the game plan. You know, trying to brawl with the guy, trying to catch him with the uppercut because Juan Mar did throw that uppercut a whole bunch of times until he caught him. When he caught him, he caught him. But I think he should have tried not to get hit so much because I did see Juan Mar get hit a bit. You know, I thought that was kind of probably unnecessary. But like I said, I don't know if it was like he was a bit slow in that weight class or was it part of the, just the game plan where he had to brawl with this guy and get inside to catch him with those uppercuts. But anyway, it worked. It was awesome. A lot of knockouts. Uh, very good fight. Juan Mar Lopez, new champ, 126. Camboa did his thing and retained his title. Um, a lot of people trying to put these guys to fight together, but the thing is, you know, I think the promoter, Bob Aaron, he has two shining stars here. I don't think he wants to throw them in there right quick. You know, I think he could keep making money off these guys and then throw them in there, probably. I don't know, that's my opinion, but I think that would be a smart move for Bob Aaron. Anyway, um, it was just uh, great. It was great. I had a lot of fun. Like I said, I didn't do the vid right after, you know, to, to get, you know, to the people who didn't, did not see the fight. Because, like I said, I got caught up talking with some friends watching the fight. Y'all know how it is, man. But anyway, I got that for you today. Got to go out and do some stuff. Y'all know, man. And uh, let's see what's up, man. Peace.